Hello, good morning again. Now, yes, I am for myself, Pablo Tesone. I am with Carolina Hernandez, and we are going to present uh, bootstrapping minimal reflective language kernels. That basically is something that we use uh, for Faro itself, but we want to be able to use for other tools. Uh, I am with uh, Carolina Hernandez. Uh, she's a PhD student. She's working a lot in the bootstrapping of uh, kernels using Faro and the tools and the problems that uh, we have uh, on them. So the question should be, I will do a little introduction of the problem that we have and she will provide the solutions to them. Uh, well, this is my uh, myself. Uh, I am a Faro engineer. I work in the Faro consortium. I basically my 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 job is trying to take the innovative ideas and the uh, nice things done by researchers and try to do it then for real uh, in a with an industrial uh, quality on some time of trying to do it for real. So. What are crafted uh, kernel languages? Well, basically, the idea that we have is that we want to produce uh, as many languages as we need. We want to produce as many runtimes as we need. We need to produce the, to have the ability to pro, uh, produce languages and runtimes for uh, small domains or languages and runtime for specific domains. And we want to have a given language that su give us support for implementing our problem. But also, it gives us all the tools that we need but not much more, because we want to have small languages. Why? Basically, this is used for, for IoT, for all the uh, uh, resource constrained uh, devices that we can have. But also, it can be useful when we, have, uh, we are paying by resources. For example, if we are using uh, cloud computing, or if we are uh, using virtualization, we want to improve uh, the usage of resources. So you, we only want to pay what we are really using. But as this is a piece of software, we have to generate it, it from the source code. We have to compile it. We have to deploy it. If it has a, some kind of problem, we, have, we want to debug it. And we want to update it. So if we take our system, so big system, and we start reducing it, and we remove, for example, the debug debugging capabilities, how we debug it? So we will uh, have to have shipping in the small runtime all the debugging capabilities. Or if we want to up, uh, update it, well, we, want, we have to also keep the updated. So we want to try to see what are the tools required to minimize this overhead and still be able to debug the system, update them uh, dynamically, and uh, develop them in a, in a nice reproducible way. So our proposed approach is use a high-level uh, bootstrap where we have a <coughs> language that uses a lot of uh, reflection, where we can define in our small language, in our small runtime, a lot of the operations, the reflective or the, a lot of the required re reflective operations to do these mod modifications. We want to generate them, these uh, small language and kernels, by doing a, a bootstrap. This is normal. We want to start from, from the source code only. But we want to do it in an environment and set of tools that allows us to debug it, to update, and to uh, deploy this working in a high level. We don't want to be crafting the, uh, the language kernel uh, really by hand, because it takes a lot of, of work. Actually, we are using a bootstrapping process for Faro itself. But the problem with that is that this bootstrapping process is very complicated. We need to master a lot of things to know before being able to touch it without crashing. Or you start touching and run the full bootstrap, uh, it fails. Touch again, uh, it fails. And it takes a lot of time. So we want to have really good uh, tools that uses the reflective features uh, uses the ability to, to, to interpret the language and to simulate it and uh, give us better bootstrapping tools. So this is in part some um, development to improve our life, uh, like developers of Faro, to bootstrap new versions of Faro. But also, it can be extended to bootstrap smaller uh, kernels and smaller applications. So basically, the context that we have now in Faro 
is that we have a, a language definition or, of, or a runtime definition that is basically source code, Smalltalk source code that we execute. This uh, Smalltalk source code is run in, inside a, a pre-existing Faro that we will uh, generate a new image uh, executing the code and the bootstrap step by step. This problem is that uh, uh, touching the modifying this source code requires a lot of knowledge or a lot of patience because it uh, is a lot of trial and error. Once the full Faro image generates a small uh, image of the kernel, it can be executed itself independently in its own virtual, virtual machine. However, I will pass now to, to Carolina. Uh, th this can always fail. O mostly of the time, this fails. That is the, the problem. Okay, so as Pablo was saying, yes, the bootstrap process is complicated and the thing is that it requires a lot of exper expertise to debug it and to basically modify the language definition. So the problem specifically is that inside the language definition, if we have unintended errors, which we will call defects, okay, they will generate failures during the bootstrap process or during the execution of the, of the kernel after it was deployed. So, yeah, it can happen that some defects prevent the kernel from generating, and that's fine. It's, we can uh, know ahead of time, but the problem is some kinds of defects, they will manifest only after. So we will generate a buggy kernel, which will fail here, and the problem is that in here, sometimes we are running this small kernel in a resource-constrained con device, uh, which, uh, given the fact that the kernel is uh, small, we don't have debugging support, we don't have sometimes the layer of communication uh, to debug remotely, so this is the challenge, okay? What do you want? What do we want? We want to open the bootstrap process to the community and we want to allow to anyone to be able to modify the current bootstrap process of Faro or to use the, the same uh, set of tools for creating their own uh, small languages. So, uh, since fixing errors is a complex task, uh, we intend to provide high-level tools which will allow us to create, maybe from zero if you want, or, or modify an, exist an existing language definition, just the source code, and after to debug the full process. Okay, so among the tools that we are providing, we have a code editor, okay, which uh, is used to modify the, the source, of, source code of the language and uh, this code editor provides the same uh, features that the code editor in Faro provides currently. We can browse code, navigate, we can perform refactorings, etc. And this is something that we didn't have before because usually the edition of the code was made by hand in a plain text uh, file. So this is to start with. The next thing that we are providing is debugging support, okay? So we provide a custom debugger which allows us to debug the bootstrap process but also the application that will run inside the generated kernel, okay? So uh, and this, this debugger will allow us to debug the application before the deploying. So we managed to do this by providing a simulated environment uh, in which the application will run and we will be able to debug it. Uh, this debugger also provides low level, uh, high level uh, tools for uh, dealing with low level um, features uh, regarding the, the interaction that the kernel will have with the virtual machine, but yeah, it's... Okay. Uh, we also provide a set of ins uh, inspectors for to be able to inspect the kernel while it is being generated and each one of the objects or of the elements that we are installing inside of it. So as an example in here, for example, we are seeing an array of um, important objects which are instances inside the kernel and we can see, for example, the main process that we are installing. We can inspect it and since Faro is uh, 
is fully reflective, uh, etc., we can provide through uh, FARO capabilities the ability to see what is inside the, the kernel in a high level way. We also are providing visual analysis of the language definition, which are available even before the generating process. So this way you can see, for example, the hierarchy for classes, the inherent, inherent, ah, inheritance, inheritance hierarchy for classes, we can see the number of methods per class. It's just a set of visual tools, tools which will give you a, a general view of how your kernel uh, will look like and what it does contain. contain. So it is important to notice that this is not only a constraint to the generation of new languages, but it is also useful for uh, developing the application which will be installed insi inside the kernel. So to provide this support, we don't need to modify nothing because the same tool set which we are using to debug the bootstrap allows us to debug the application that we run after. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm open to questions. <laughs> yes? Uh, if you design a small language uh, with your approach, uh, what would be the target? The target? Uh, okay, uh, for the case of a small language, you could, for example, uh, develop a language that is uh, specifically, uh, that is small, is, is the smallest language that you need to run uh, a specific application, for example, in an Arduino. I don't know. You want an application that, I don't know, needs to check a sensor every, I don't know, uh, one second. So you don't need big part of the library that we are providing right now in Faro. You don't need it because it's very simple. So that way you can get rid of most of the features that uh, that comes by default in the in, in a minimal kernel, and you can obtain a kernel which will wait I don't know 50 kilobytes, mm -hmm. maybe less. Mm -hmm. So. We no. We have, a, we have a minimal kernel definition, which is what it is required by the virtual machine to run an image. So that is provided since the beginning. Given that, on top of that, you can start adding things and uh, you can make it as, as minimal as you can, as you want. Yeah. Uh, yes? You are not sorry? Um, is there an init machine code for KV Arduino? Or does it init bytecode which runs on a VM which has to have already been written for KV Arduino? We are, I, I'm not sure if I understood well the, the question, but we are aiming to run always in the same virtual machine. Our small kernels are running always in the same virtual machine which runs Faro now. This is like the, 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 uh, Alcance? Yeah, the scope of this project. We have a parallel projects which are working on minimizing the virtual machine we're working with. But for now, we are fixing the virtual machine. This is the virtual machine that you have. And yeah, it's a bytecode interpreter virtual machine. And uh, so we are generating these kernels which are compatible, compatible with this virtual machine. Just yeah. Uh, it's just to, to add, uh, the virtual machine that we have now, we have basically it running for um, uh, 32 and 64 bits uh, PCs and uh, 32 bits uh, ARM uh, architectures. Uh, we, uh, this is a sheet ba uh, base uh, or sheet improve uh, uh, bytecode uh, machine. And we are working uh, to generate uh, alternative to this, for example, directly generating the the bytecode, uh, the, the machine code from the bytecode during the the execution. But uh, all these uh, solutions of directly generating machine code, mm -hmm. uh, it will require some uh, uh, work or some research how to uh, to keep all the dynamic uh, features of Faro uh, just generating code. But uh, as Carolina says, uh, this is a part of the story. We w we are also working in the in the in 
improving the VM and the part that we are now is in the tooling of the VM because also we are want to democratize the, the, the access to the VM. Uh, and so it make it easy to, to do new, new improvements and it does not need to be a, an expert to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes? It's a, uh, we, we write it in a, um, what is the name? The, slang. yeah, we write it in a slang that is a, a, a kind of distribution of small talk and then that is uh, compiled into C. It's a, it's a so subset, it's similar, it's a similar solution that, for example, our Python, where we have a, a small subset of uh, Faro that can be directly compiled or can, can be transpiled to C and we are using that to uh, generate the, the lowest, the lowest level. The, then on top of that, uh, you have pure uh, small talk or pure faro, and you can do all the reflective and dynamic stuff usually. And you start compiling it to WebAssembly. We have tried. We still uh, we are as we uh, WebAssembly is lacking um, is lacking a garbage collection uh, or a nicer memory model that allows us to to have actually an arbitrary memory model. Uh, we are a little limited, but it can run. Uh, but there is also a transpilation to directly to JavaScript that works better even than, than the version of WebAssembly. We are still kind of limited by the limitations of WebAssembly until the, the next uh, uh, release. Thank you. Thank you.